Hello, and welcome to Insightful Conversations with your host, Three Principles Practitioner, Del A.D. Jones. Join her each week as she welcomes some of the world's leading Three Principles teachers and practitioners who share how this understanding has dramatically improved the quality of their lives and the lives of those they work with. I'm so excited to have as my guest today the amazing Rob Cook. Rob is a corporate wellness speaker, trainer, and co-owner of Bootcamp X. Born and raised in the housing projects of Birmingham, Alabama, Rob sought to create a brighter future than what awaited many young people who grew up on the streets. He joined the United States Air Force, where he became a highly decorated combat veteran. After retiring honorably from the military, Rob transitioned into civilian life as an entrepreneur. Utilizing his experience in the military and his understanding of the three principles, Rob's goal is to create a safe and secure environment for both personal and professional growth. Welcome, Rob. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> Thank you. me today. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah, so, um, well, we met on a Michael Neal's Genius Catalyst yes, course. Yes, Genius Catalyst. And um, it was great talking to you, so I invited you here to share your journey. <laughs> so I want to know, so how did you first come across the principles? Um, so I was... Um, I just moved, retired and moved here to uh, Los Angeles and a friend had invited us over for dinner. And when I got to her home, um, I picked up a book off a counter and it was creating the impossible. Mm. So I start thumbing through it and I'm reading it and I go, hey, can I, can I borrow this book? She was like, well, why don't you just go talk to him? He's in the other room. And I was like, the dude, I wrote this book in the other room. (laughs) And so I was like, which one? So we look into the room and, and she points him out. So I go in and I, Hey, sir, how you doing? You know, I'm talking to her. Still very militant at the time. And it was a lot of sirs. And, uh, and you know how Michael is. So yeah. uh, he, I mean, amused. We just had a good time laughing and talking throughout the night. And um, he had said a few things. And again, reading through the book that it piqued me. And we kept going, kept going, kept talking, met a few times. And then he called me with an opportunity to do an intensive, um, a live intensive for Supercoach. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I didn't know it was a new idea it was the first time he was going to do it uh but we were going to basically go one-on-one in a room while everybody in the other room watched i had no idea what i was in <laughs> for um and that's where he changed my life wow. and um he he broke something and at the time i physically couldn't explain it i couldn't explain it period but something physically in the conversation mm-hmm. broke or the pressure fell off me and that's when I started, okay, well, tell me about these three Ps. Yeah. And that was the start of it. That wow. was that was how it um how it went. And it is pretty, I guess ironic looking back at it, the period of time and what when I started hearing about it, I had already started poking holes in my foundation mm-hmm. of what I believe life and how things are supposed to go. I had started having experiences that weren't truly validated with beliefs I had. So mm-hmm. it's like something's off here. Yeah. I have to update the beliefs or this experience can't be real. Like something has to change. Yeah. And um, he, he kind of helped me start that process. And that's where the consciousness for me started happening was, oh, that's me. Oh, that's not real. Yeah. Oh, and it, it from that, it I became a kid. Yeah, that <laughs> it is was, wonderful. Yeah, it was just tried in anything. Yeah. So it was, it's, I started going out and just talking to people to see what they would say and have these side conversations in my head of, <laughs> oh, this is what's happening. Wow. Yeah, it so was. Tell us a little bit about your background because I know, uh, I mean, I, you went into the military at a very early age. So yeah. it sounds like, it, tell us a little bit of what it was like growing up for you mm-hmm. and that military life and then coming across this understanding and what, what the big shift was in your, you know, your attitude, your behavior, how you showed up. Oh, um, it's, it's again pretty interesting because I, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm-hmm. And, um, for all intents and purposes, we were still dealing with uh, racial equality. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were still dealing with discrimination at a very high level, even when I was born earlier and I was young. But I had these three aunts, my dad's sisters, who would always tell me when I was a kid, like, hey, don't get caught up in that. Like, you're going to go on to do different stuff. Don't, you know, don't listen. It's not, you know, it's, it's for us to deal with. And that was pretty confusing wow. to me. Um, even when it was certain guys that I hung out with that were considered gangs or bad crowds. And I remember them like, hey, man, you you go home. Like, you don't need to be out here doing this stuff. And I, I used to find it, you know, like, well, what's, am I not cool enough? Yeah. You know, do I not fit in? And now I'm chasing 
this uh, so-called this bad life just to be accepted. And everybody in the bad life is trying to push me away from it. So it's almost as if they're yeah. seeing something that I can't see. Yeah. Then I go over into the military and I take those same bad conditioning skills with me. And I had commanders tell me, like, I don't know why I'm not putting you out the military right now for your actions, but you better change or, or else. And I'm like, OK. And I got mentors that I could throw excuses to about why I didn't have to change. And then I got a mentor and I gave him my sob story. I'm from the projects of Birmingham, Alabama, you know, and I've had this and I didn't get this opportunity and this. And he said, oh, he said, I went to the same high school you did. <laughs> I go, what? He had went decades before, but yeah. he grew up in a rival set of projects. Yeah. He had the same circumstances. And truth be told, you can even lay on. He had it worse than I did. Yeah. And that excuse fell away and I could no longer <laughs> tell that story. So I was left like, okay, so what do I do now? And he was like, you, you got the potential, man, to do yeah. whatever you want to do. And I was like, so how do I do that? He was like, just, just, just do this. And I, I start reading, I start studying leadership and I, I made it to the top. You know, I was uh, revered in my profession. Um, I was known, I was highly decorated and it was just like, this is unbelievable. Wow. Um, and then as that, transition began to happen after my last deployment and learning things and and seeing the world from a different set of eyes it was I mean we were driving convoy vehicles through kids playgrounds mm, yeah. you know you're you're watching um in Iraq I remember watching um through on camera as a family set a kid on fire oh my god because the Americans are going to come out and save the kid. But yeah. because they are a minor, you have to bring the family with them. And now yeah. they're in our oh, control. Wow. So we feed them. We shelter them. Yeah. We protect them. Yeah. And it was like, but at the risk of the kid. So no, exactly. when things like that start happening, I start questioning a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, it was just like, man, this is this is cruel. This is. Yeah. But I understand it. It was yeah. it was weird. And that is kind of like the beginning of when the holes started poking into my foundation of you know everything from religion to what I understood about people and and just human interaction altogether mm. and um and falling on my face and what what the world considers PTSD when I just got to the point where I detached from everybody everything um having a hard time dealing with my children and, and communication it was just I couldn't I couldn't understand or come to grips with how I was living mm -hmm in such a place full of turmoil, but I was, you know, I was so happy or I had this happiness in me. And there were times when things were supposed to go bad, but they came out in my benefit or they did good and I never understood them. And I was running myself crazy because I didn't have that understanding. Yeah, yeah. And the principles kind of was like, so what? Yeah. Just keep going. It didn't matter that you have the yeah. understanding. And well, that, that's, I mean, that's what we always say is the principles are in action, whether we know whether about we know them or not. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, and that's I'm hearing statement. it in your story. I'm hearing, oh, yeah. I'm hearing so much. I'm hearing, you know, that you had such a, thank goodness, given your background, you had such a strong um, link to your, your well-being and, yeah. and to your wisdom telling you, even though you were trying these other things, Try, your was, thoughts yeah. were saying, let me, I want to be accepted. I yeah. want to be in the bad crowd. But something inside you was was waking up to people that could point you in the right direction uh, and help you. And I just love that. And the resilience, too, the resilience that even all the extreme circumstances that you were, you know, privy to and part of, that you that you were able to come through as you did. Yeah, the, the first part, the, the thought process that got me through the first part was I was doing it for someone else. Mm. So it was, it was either for my kids or for my family or for this. And, and that came with the pressure. But, but after introduction to the three p's and the more i begin it's now just it's understanding who i am mm -hmm. um and it's so different now um and it's so it's so crazy to have the conversation and you almost only want to talk to three people to an extent <laughs> because you sound crazy explaining this change this mm -hmm. transformative change that came from a conversation yeah you know it's hard to explain that wait you're just 30 years of collecting this information <laughs> this way you're just going to dump it you know, but um, yeah, I've been. But isn't that freedom? That, in that, oh my God, yes! Uh, <laughs> I know. So much freedom in it that you you wake up to. I got so much more energy to do a yeah, lot more things. Exactly. <laughs> I yeah. mean, for real. And the possibility for me, I had oh, a yeah. sob story too, and that kept me in my little confined box, mm -hmm. and 
you know, I was, I was, I had a, this laundry list of all the things that I can't be because of. <laughs> oh yes, oh yeah, <laughs> I got those too. <laughs> you got them too. I got those I think too. We've all got one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just you know, when you realize that's just a story that oh, you man. constructed, yep. you know, way back, and keep kept adding to over the years, you know, all the evidence that kept pointing back to the story was yeah. true. And when you really get to that place where it's like, it doesn't have to be. No. It can be anything I want it to be. Yeah. I, <laughs> when I got awakened to the fact that I no longer had to beat myself up over the rules I made up <laughs> yes. about a situation, you know, like, no, exactly. wait, I set these parameters on myself. Mm-hmm. I could just extend them. <laughs> exactly. you know? Like if, if that's the game we're playing, like, yeah. I don't have to, because that definitely won't get me to where my desired result is yeah. if I just beat myself up with this. And it, it was just, it was like, that simple? Yeah, I know. That simple. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, cause super crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> super crazy that <laughs> it is it that simple. It feels so real and oh, so yeah. out there. And we're at the mercy of it and we're the victim of this. Yeah. It's, but it's incredible when you do, like, just like you said, when we realize we're the one making up the rules, yeah. we're the ones that are making up the parameters. I mean, for everything we say, like, oh, this world is so bad, mm-hmm. or everybody in this world is this. And I was like, well, it, that can't be true if I just do one nice thing a day for someone. Yeah, exactly. Then that means that, that statement can't be true. Yeah. Well, if everybody did one <laughs> nice thing, we're, that wouldn't even, but most people will choose not to do the one nice thing mm-hmm. because of the thought everybody's, you know, yeah. bad or they're, you know, good people or so on and so forth. And it's just, it's just amazing how much those narratives yeah. direct behavior or actions or stop, you know, you from being who you want to be, you know. So I want to talk about what you do now. So since leaving the military, you, I mean, you're, you're huge. You do all these things. I mean, I mean, you're a keynote speaker for Fortune 500 companies. You have your boot camp. Um, so just tell us a little bit. How did that come about? The easiest thing to transition to um, when coming out was, was fitness, was mm-hmm. wellness, um, because it was something that was a part of, of what I did for 21 years. Um, I do like to say I've never failed a PT test, you know, in, in 21 years that I've never scored lower than a 95 and I took care of myself um, physically, but I did not mentally. Mm. Um, and and that allowed me to kind of have some hard times. And after, you know, experiencing that, it was like, OK, wait, there's more to this than just the gym. Mm-hmm. There's way more to this. Yeah. And then I started realizing how not taking care of my body was affecting my decisions and that's when i developed the corporate wellness programs that i was like okay if i'm dealing with this mostly you know other people are too so i started out initially just personal training um and lucky enough i got some clients who were ceos and they start hearing the passion and the energy and they put me in front of their employees and then came the program and I, i took a position to manage a fitness facility once that had a program attached to it the same and it put me in front of you know, people from Cooper, from Merrill Lynch, from Bank of America, and they were just responding to it. And it was just, let me simplify this thing. Mm. You know, if I can make yeah. it simplified where you can get your body just in the best condition that you need it to be so you're efficient and effective in your life, not the professional athlete life mm-hmm. that we model these patterns out of, yeah. not the bikini model who works out 10 yeah. hours a day. You know, yeah. said, that's that's not who you should be chasing, you know. Yeah. And if I can simplify this thing to keep you in good health, and you stay connected to what you want to do, then I think it's a win-win. Oh, my goodness, that sounds incredible. <laughs> and it's so true because I think so many people do get put off because they just they have this sort of image of this bar that's so oh, high man. that they can't reach it, so therefore oh, yeah. they don't do anything. So yeah. that's a wonderful approach. I hear the comment. I've heard this comment at least four programs. Mm-hmm. Rob, if I knew it was that simple, I'd have started years ago. Wow. <laughs> and that keeps me going with, yeah. okay, let me dissect it even more. I mean, because... Personal training is an A-type personality feel, you know. Mm-hmm. I got something you want. <laughs> you know, I look good. Trust that what I'm going to say is going to get you to look good, too. Yeah. I mean, that's just what it is, <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> you know. Um, but Very real. Yeah, very <laughs> real, you know. And But when I started, it didn't feel right to force people into what worked for mm-hmm. me. Because I understood I had a different understanding of this. Like, for us in the military, fitness was based on your perception and leadership. Like, mm-hmm. if you didn't work out, nobody followed you. 
Yeah. And if nobody follow you, you can you can <laughs> success <laughs> your you can be uh, mission success. You yeah. know, mission success ranged upon how many people followed you and followed you well. Yeah. Um, that's that's the difference in life or death in some instances. So mm-hmm. fitness was directly related to how you was viewed as a leader. We we never talked about health benefits. That was. <laughs> Wow, that wasn't, yeah. you know, it was, this is what keeps you in the fight. This is what's yeah. going to save your life. Well, when I got out, nobody had that mantra. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the first thing everybody gave up, yeah. you know, fitness. And I was just like, man, well, I realized because it was so difficult. Because we had conceptualized it so much mm-hmm. that you, you didn't know who to listen to. Because your favorite trainer says the other trainer that your best friend listened to sucks Mm -hmm. and this nutritionist says this diet is going to be the one and and this lady says that and this person had and it was just a mess yeah it was really just a mess and um i went on a world tour to this last year to june i mean to um europe because i was like well why doesn't europe have these same problems yeah you know as far as they love wine they (laughs) love the pasta you know and i was amazed at how late they eat yeah, I know. I'd be hungry at 7 o'clock. Like, I can't eat anymore. <laughs> it's past 6.30. Yeah, it's like, oh, my God, I can't eat this late at night. You know, American marketing mm-hmm. made me think, you know, is you can't eat after this. And they were out eating and having a great time at 9, 30, 10 at night. But that next day started, they were walking to yeah. the bus stops. It was public transportation, riding bikes. It was more activeness. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, there it is. <laughs> Yeah, there it is, you know, and they they weren't body shamed into a certain body type. You know, the beaches were full with whatever your Mm -hmm. shape was that you showed up and everybody has a shape. Some are round, (laughs) you know, whatever you want to call it. But everybody, they didn't worry about that. Yeah. Well, not all of those pressures allow them to be so much healthier in their way. And we talked about that because I added to that. I thought the... um, the, the lack of stress as well. I think, oh, yeah. there's, a, I think there's a better yeah. balanced life in Europe. I mean, I notice it for myself when I, I spend a lot of time there. And obviously, I grew up in the UK. But I think that this the sort of like the eight hours, eight hours of work, eight hours of, of family or play, and eight hours of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas here, it's sort of, you know, there's this, this whole sort of, you know, got to do better, got to do more, yeah. got to put more, more hours more, in. More. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think, and then there's that sort of like, you know, using food or whatever it is to comfort the stress mm-hmm. level. The stress level, yeah. So how do you, um, so you were already doing this before you came across the principles. So how do you incorporate the principles in, in your training? Well, now it's... <clears throat> The first thing was uh, learning the principles and really learning them for myself Mm -hmm. before I ever tried to teach them to anyone. So really, it it started very confusing for me (laughs) um, because I was I was still living in a conceptual world of Mm -hmm. I got to do it this way, meet Mm -hmm. these goals, Mm -hmm. lay out these plans, follow these steps. But my personal life was going through this learning to flow and trust Mm -hmm. the genius in me, the God in me, the now, you know, all the terms we put it on it. But it was very confusing at first. And then over time, as I sink down more and more into it, where I personally begin to live this just mm-hmm. in my life, I noticed, and I don't know when, but I noticed it had taken effect. It had taken effect in my training mm-hmm. because yeah. I wasn't browbeating my clients anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was really trying to hear, okay, you just told me that you did A and B when we have a goal to get you to C, and you know that that contradicts us getting there. So why? Like, let's mm-hmm. get to that mm-hmm. because this, these push-ups, these squats, the, the core work, that's not really addressing why. So that means we'll be at this point again. Mm-hmm. And I just started talking to him. Yeah. You know, and then I found out, oh, this, this way I'm training you doesn't work for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let me come to your office. Oh, well, you sit down for 40 minutes to do a conference call every day. Well, let's just walk. Mm-hmm. Let's get you yeah. on the microphone. You walk the office. Get those calories. You like watching TV shows with your family, then, hey, give me the commercials. <laughs> you can have the show. Give me the commercials. Wow. And what I found that people engage more with yeah. that. Hey, we got to work out this Saturday morning. You don't get much family time. No, bring your wife. Bring the kids. Mm-hmm. We're going on a hike together. Yeah. The whole family. And it's like, oh, that's fitness. Oh, I love yes, that this. is. That's, yeah. that's fitness because exercise is just a supplement. That means you just it's just like a, a protein shake supplement. It's in addition to your normal diet not taking care of yourself, you know, or mm-hmm. your normal diet not providing everything that you need for. So you get the supplement of protein or the supplement of this. But if your diet handles it, you don't need the supplement. Mm-hmm. If you move enough in your life, 
You don't yeah. need to go to a gym and pay the 150 for the <laughs> membership and the 1500 for the trainer and the, yeah. you know, no, if you don't. But n- now there is a case where those may need that. Yeah. They may need that, that structure plan, yeah. but that's not for everybody. See, I'm hearing the principles in what you're saying in that you are really, uh, you know, number one, you're doing some incredibly deep listening. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, that you're really seeing each person or rather having that one person connect with their own wisdom yes. as to what's right for them. Absolutely. Rather than be this blanket statement of mm-hmm. this is my program, this is what yeah. works, and if you follow it verbatim, you will have the mm-hmm. results that, that I have. Absolutely. Out, yeah. Outside of currently, currently, mm-hmm. outside of Boot Camp X, I don't have a program that extends over 30 to 60 days. Mm-hmm. Because okay. after that, I don't want you to hear my voice anymore. I want you to hear yours. <laughs> Wow. Now that's oh, that's amazing. That, yeah, but bring, I, <laughs> this brings me back to you mentioned something about the unfit. Now, as a trainer, yeah. that's. <laughs> yes, unfit. Exactly. I, I love this. So you're going to explain yeah, that. So, unfit was. Um, I, I used to have this, this notion when I was writing a book that I had checked all these different boxes from um, being a. I've voted Republican before, I voted Democratic. I've. Mm-hmm you know, been considered poor and I've been considered middle class. I've been, you know, all these different boxes. And when I was writing them down and and I was formulating a book, you know, about how I fit all these boxes and it was almost like a badge of honor Mm -hmm. until I realized like, yeah, you do fit all those boxes, but shame on you because that's not you. Yeah. You, you, that's not really, you're doing things to fit in that box. So it's almost like, you're creating a phony storyline just to fit in that box. Yeah. And then when I realized I do it, uh, obviously everybody else must do it too. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. I, I had this, yeah, I had this image that I wanted everybody to see that was the projection. Mm-hmm. And then about 10 feet back was me. Mm-hmm. And then that gap in between was all the murkiness, <laughs> you know, all the mucky. And uh, it was just getting that, you know, getting that out the way to saying, hey, man, just be you. Yeah. Just yeah. be you. I just think it's such a funny, it's such a great name for for a fitness coach. Yes, but it's just Unfit challenging, yourself. yeah, but it unchallenging, is, a, yeah. challenging all the status quo. Yeah, everything they say you have to do to be this right fit, challenge it. Mm-hmm. Make sure it fits for you. Yeah, you got to get in the gym two hours a day. Challenge it. That doesn't work for my life. Mm-hmm. If I go to the gym two hours a day, I could possibly lose my home, or you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then that means that it's not for you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you got to have a trainer to get the results you want. Challenge it. You know, even even on the other side. Oh, I can do this without a trainer. Mm-hmm. Challenge it. Exactly. You know, because they are there for a reason. I don't I don't knock trainers. Yeah. They they provide a service to people who are in need, just like every other service. But I'm just saying, challenge the things that you've been forced into when you, that you're not happy about. Now, mm-hmm. if you're happy about the way your body looks and your routine, by all means, keep running, keep yeah. running. But mm-hmm. if you're not. <laughs> then challenge it because maybe that doesn't fit you. Maybe a more a a home workout would be best. Maybe a in home trainer. Maybe a a retreat starter. Mm-hmm. There's so many different ways we could find that fit you for you just not to be doing it. Yeah, that's all. Wow, I love that. It's very very cool. So um so with all when with all these like frameworks breaking away, where do you see yourself going? Oh man, that's, <laughs> that's a big uh, one. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. Um. With all this possibility, honestly, the, if I would say that the thing I'm most excited about right now is um, Super Coach coming in June. Yeah. Um, because I've I've had, I mean, I probably not true, but in my mind, I've had quite a different track with Michael, mm-hmm. um, with how he's been coaching me and, and helping me. Um, that everything for me was learned in different blocks, mm-hmm. and what I feel or think right now is that they're like five different rooms and I'm looking to kind of like break those down so it kind of meshes together you know and you, you want and, them all to come together and be yeah a house. My, yes exactly <laughs> you know I, I can I can show you great rooms they're all separated you know by this road but um and I know that's in my thoughts I know that's in my thinking but I, I really am excited about it because it it does paint a um a direction to look to Mm-hmm. In, in the super coach realm and uh, one thing that he's helped me learn is that I am a catalyst that was probably the biggest thing he helped me understand um, and that was after the fires I was like Michael I, I'm looking around and I'm watching people love on others and people help one another because we were the fires was attacking everybody no, I know. <laughs> you know and we all lost something or mm-hmm. were in jeopardy of losing which brought us together mm-hmm. and I'll never forget we were sitting at King House in, in, um, 
at the commons and, and uh, Calabasas and he said, that's you. Mm. He was like that same love and, and draw that lowers the barrier so we can have a conversation as you. It's mm. beautiful. Yeah, and so now I'm just ready. I'm ready yeah. to walk that, so. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that sounds great. So, so you didn't do super coach. Or this is the first. This would be the first time, time I did. It, yes, did I did do, do emerging voices. voices. Yes, that was great. And that was amazing. And was and what did you come away with? with um, emerging that? voices was unfit. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. Uh, um, yeah. We were we were sitting down and and he was telling me I had so much in my head and we were just mm -hmm. all over the place, and he helped me kind of bring it all down. And he said, "You're just training the mindset." He mm -hmm. said, "That mindset right now just happens to be backed by fitness." Yeah. And it was like, okay. And that fitness is the metaphor that I use. You know, I talk about it in working out and things. I'm just using fitness for you to see yourself fighting resistance. Mm -hmm. If you, let's say, for instance, if I give you a hard workout set, how you face that hard workout set pretty much tells me how you <laughs> handle resistance. You know, yeah. you got the clients who are pushed through no matter what, even to the extent that they'll hurt themselves mm -hmm. before they allow you to spot. Those people probably won't ask for help in real life. Yeah. Then you got those who are going to ask for help ever before they sit down because they don't want to push <laughs> through it alone. You know, then you got those who will go until they can't go anymore. And then you help them and you achieve the goal. It's yeah. it's that same process, yeah. getting people to see that, you know, yeah. this is this is how life works. Exactly. You have to push through this, mm -hmm. you know, to get that, you know, yeah. um, whatever this and that is. <laughs> Well, that's that sounds amazing. I, I'm it's so funny because I'm listening to my my as you're sharing that. I'm thinking about okay, so I got a torn meniscus now because I didn't stop when my body was saying, yeah, exactly. This is not good for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'll so, respond. It will tell yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. It will tell you. I've um, I've had several people ask me to come do workouts with them or things like that, and I didn't agree with the concept of how they worked out, and I'm mm -hmm. just be like. No, because I don't want to promote that. You know, <laughs> that's going to hurt somebody, that yeah. style of uh, working out. And I never forget when I first got into the fitness industry, it was you had to make everybody throw up. Oh, you know, really? it, yeah, it's like they, they don't have a good workout if they haven't thrown up. Or oh it's goodness. like you exert them so far past their abilities that they can't come back tomorrow because they're destroyed. And you, you walk <laughs> around feeling great, you know, and it's like, no, that's not real. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, like that's... help them deal, you know, teach them. And yeah. now I teach breathing. You know, I teach um, muscle awareness. You know, mm -hmm. I teach when you're super strained, when you're trying to push these last couple of weights, I'm telling you to be cognizant of what's happening in yeah. your body right now. Because if you get faced with a situation that looks apparently real, you're going to need those. It's the same skills. Same. The same it's amazing. skills. I love it because I see that all you keep doing is putting, pointing people back to yes. what they know inside. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't believe it. We are out of time. Oh. <laughs> so, but I just want to thank you. That was fabulous. That was uh, thank so you great. for having me oh, again. It was really wonderful. And um, yeah, so uh, you, we have social media sites for you for people to contact yes, you. Yes, you can find me there. You. Yes, absolutely on Instagram and Facebook yeah, and Twitter. Okay. I'm Rob Cook. Um, or reach out to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Reach, reach out, out to, to me. You. Yeah, <laughs> we'll find me. Touch <laughs> with Rob. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Dale. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.